Are you thinking about getting started with Matterport? Are you wondering what camera to get? Then this show is for you. Hi, all. I'm Dan Smagbrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome, super geeky Matterport-themed show for you today, and uh, it's a long title, so I might need to take a deep breath to try and say this. <sighs> when and why Scan Your Space founder Tom Sparks uses a Matterport Pro 3 camera, a Matterport Pro 2 camera, a Matterport Axis smartphone rotator, a Ricoh Theta Z1, an Insta360 One RS one inch or a Leica BLK360 first generation scanner to create Matterport tours. And here to talk to us about that is our subject matter expert, Tom Sparks, founder, Scan Your Space, a division of Sparks Media Group. Uh, Tom, thanks for being back on the show to share your expertise with us. Thanks for having me. Um, can you repeat the title? I didn't capture it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, Tom, for context to today's show, tell us about Sparks Media Group and Scan Your Space. So Sparks Media Group is a real estate media provider. Uh, we provide everything from photography to 3D virtual tours, video, floor plans, property websites, uh, virtual staging, everything else. Uh, and that's generally geared towards residential. Uh, and then I created Scan Your Space to cater to the uh, industrial, commercial, hospitality industry to provide some of the same services. And you provide Matterport. We provide Matterport as one of those services. Awesome. And your geographic coverage area, I know you're, you're based in Sassoon, uh, California, between uh, halfway between San Francisco and Sacramento, but I think your coverage area goes far beyond that. Yeah, yeah. We're conveniently located uh, right next to the Jelly Belly factory where they make jelly beans. And uh, we cover all of Northern California, Southern California, uh, parts of Nevada, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico. So we're trying to expand outward. Awesome. Yeah. And what were you busy doing the last three weeks? <laughs> I lived at a, a house that was being listed um, in order to scan it with all these various devices we're going to talk about. So you, you scanned a 2,053 foot square square foot home, nearly 8,000 square foot lot, uh, four bedroom, three baths, bath in Vacaville, California, with a Matterport Pro 3 camera, Matterport Pro 2 camera, Matterport Axis smartphone rotator, a uh, Rico Theta Z1, a Insta360 One RS one inch. Uh, you didn't scan it with a, B, did not scan it with a uh, Leica BLK360 first generation, but we'll still talk about that scanner as well. Um, so uh, you literally scanned the, the same house uh, with Matterport tours. Maddening, isn't it? Um, I did offer, I did scan it also with a couple competitors uh, as well. But for for today's purposes, I think we'll focus on the Matterport, maybe. If okay, right. that, that that's awesome. And yeah. and I, I I don't think it's actually crazy. I think for the we get around network forum community, uh, you have really given the community a gift by being able to to see side by side by side each of these Matterport tours. Uh, they're available at wgan.info forward slash Sparks Media Group. Think of that as a short, tiny URL that gets to all of Tom's posts in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, I created that link because not only can you find the five Matterport tours created with the different cameras, scanners, um, but uh, Tom, you're you're like you gave this other gift, which is you did this first person video on each of your scanning. So you have a uh, I want to say a GoPro uh, pinned to your chest. Uh, we can see your iPad. 
you've now embedded your iPad into the video. You've embedded your I, your iPhone into the video for timing. And you give uh, commentary as you're scanning about what's working, what's not working, what questions, things that are bothering you, and what's what's generally happening. So uh, 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 if you're interested in seeing these five videos in real time, five cameras, five videos shooting Matterport, they're all available at WGAN.com info forward slash Sparks Media Group. You can also, and I encourage you to go to Tom's YouTube channel at Sparks Media Group. Uh, all his videos are posted there. You get the benefit of also seeing the tours in the, embedded in the forum. Uh, but Tom has created a lot of how-to videos uh, for for the, the, the community. It's just awesome. Anyway, so that's the context for, for today's show. Um, Tom, I, I want to go through each of the cameras and just simply ask you when and why do you use that particular camera to do Matterport? And again, for context, uh, our audience today, those that are thinking about getting started with Matterport, uh, and they're probably wondering which camera to buy. So that that's really who we're speaking to today. Um, so the Matterport Pro 3 camera, uh, just one last thought before I ask you a question is uh, you, were, you were on the show uh, back in December, 10 Pro Tips for Scanning with the Matterport Pro 3 camera. We're not going to do a deep dive into the Matterport Pro 3 in part because we did a full show together and we've done a lot of shows on, on we get around on WGA and TV live at five on the, the Pro 3 camera. But what, what's, what's your take on Matterport Pro 3 camera? When and why do you use it to create? create Matterport tours? Uh, well, first and foremost, if there's outside spaces that we're going to scan, um, it's huge for that. Uh, that would be, I think, the the main deciding factor on what to use. Um, when I was doing the scans, and we can talk about timing and everything, um, you know, Matterport says the Pro 3 uh, is really quick, and you can get stuff done a lot more efficiently. And I've found that to be true in most cases, but sometimes not. Um, so I think the deciding, the main deciding factor would be if an agent or if a business wanted an outside space scanned, I would immediately go for the Pro 3. Okay. And the Matterport Pro 2 camera, when, do you, when and why do you use a Matterport Pro 2 camera? Uh, most of the other time, I would use the Pro 2. Um, if it's a smaller space. And, and why is that? Uh, because I have the classic plan. And so I like the benefit of uploading to the Matterport classic plan and keeping those links around. Okay. So I'm going to refer our audience to the We Get Around Network forum, WGANforum.com. Uh, Tom is talking about pricing, Matterport classic pricing. That's pricing as of May, changed as of May 9th, 2019. If you go into the search bar and you put in um, classic pricing, you can read all about that. But if you're just starting out, Matterport classic pricing is not available to you. So uh, I'm going to see if I can ask Tom, if you didn't have that classic pricing, when and why would you use a Matterport Pro 2 camera versus a Matterport Pro 3 camera? Uh, well, I I have several Pro 2s, uh, and so my photographers have the benefit of using them. Uh, they're a lot more cost effective than the Pro 3, um, so I'd use them in that regard. And I think the battery, well, yeah, I haven't, I I I don't have enough battery testing experience to speak on the battery life of the Pro 2 versus the Pro 3. But um, I've done all day shoots with the Pro 2, and it's lasted a long time. Uh, uh, so battery is really not a consideration. Matterport Pro 2 camera is going to last you the whole, whole day. And Matterport Pro 3 camera comes with rechargeable uh, batteries. Uh, that, and I, I think you bought four or five. That's topic for another day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that you're not really hard pressed in terms of, uh, oh, gee, is the camera going to last all day? Uh, I think the only thing I'm hearing is I would use a Pro 2 camera because we already have them and because we have classic pricing. Uh, if somebody was new and they were 
trying to decide about getting started with Matterport and they had a choice between a, buying a Matterport 2 camera for $3,400 or a Matterport Pro 3 camera for $6,000? Is it worth the extra $2,600 to get a Matterport Pro 3 camera? Well, I'm, I'm, as as you're talking, I'm looking at a side by side comparison uh, of a couple areas in this house that I did. And if you do, you want to go into quality lightly here? Sure. Uh, uh, what, what, what's your impression in terms of quality between the two cameras? Well, they look almost identical. Um, from a just looking at a tour standpoint, the window pulls are very similar. The coloring is very similar. Uh, I can't see a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So, so if you compare quality, which is very similar, if you compare batteries, which aren't really a comparison, um, and it gets, then it gets down to pricing and you got what, 60, 6,000, 6,500, depending on when you bought it for the pro three, 33. Yeah, Matterport pro three camera today, six, uh, today is $6,000. If you get the accelerator kit, it's $8,000. If you bought the Matterport pro two camera today it's thirty four hundred dollars yeah so um it would just come down to what your budget is and being able to scan outside versus inside and then again another factor is when you're scanning inside um where you have sunlight coming through pouring on the floor you mm -hmm. got those black marks in the mini map and you have to do a 360 to 3d conversion on the pro 2 on the Pro 3, it handles it perfectly. So mm -hmm. a, little, a few less steps. Uh, some less steps. Uh, and then in terms of, uh, we're, we're primarily talking about residential real estate, but you shoot commercial. And I imagine you've shot some uh, commercial spaces that have very high atriums. I imagine you've shot some warehouses that have had uh, hundreds of thousands of square feet and yeah. quite a distance. Uh, and... Uh, would that change your your thinking about uh, getting a Pro 3 versus a Pro 2 if you shoot large commercial office spaces, warehouse spaces? Definitely. I did a shoot. It was maybe 40,000 square feet with the Pro 2 um, a few years ago. And from what I remember, I was there six, seven, eight hours. It was a long time. Um, and I've, as you've seen from some of my recent videos, when I've done the test on how far you can scan in between, you can go much further with the Pro 3, um, you have a lot less alignment issues. And yeah, you can get that data of really tall ceilings or roof lines. Um, this house that we did with the Pro 3, you can see some of the roof from the front of the house uh, where it's low. And I didn't raise the tripod any additional height. I know some uh, service providers have you know 30 foot tripods or whatever. I don't think I'm that bold enough to do that yet, but um, yeah, so there's an advantage in that regard too. Okay, so if you're just planning to shoot residential real estate, you're only planning to be inside the house and you're trying to decide between a Matterport Pro 2 camera, a Matterport Pro 3 camera, uh, you're, you're not eligible for the classic plan. It sounds like you would say get the Pro 2, save a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. On the other hand, if you think you might start doing commercial spaces you or you you probably kick yourself as soon as you bought the Pro 2 and realize you need to shoot outside and and then you're going to feel stuck. I um, So yeah, yeah, it just depends on what your business is. If the majority, majority of it is residential, I would go with the Pro 2 uh, because you can always add a few 360s outside with the Pro 2 and that's sufficient enough for most agents. If you're um, doing outdoor spaces, connected spaces, uh, large, larger spaces, I would pick the Pro 3. Okay, awesome. So uh, Matterport Axis Smartphone Rotator. Is Matterport a sponsor of your show? No. Okay. Well, tell, 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 tell me what you want to tell me. I don't care whether they're sponsor or not. Tell me what your, your honest opinion is. <laughs> um, I wish I would have bought it on Amazon and used it within a couple of days so I could have returned it. <laughs> I bought four of them. And I thought, this is great. I can give them to all my guys. And uh, one of my photographers was brave enough to try it out. And he said, this takes a long time. And I hadn't used it yet. So I didn't necessarily believe him. I thought maybe he just, you know, because everybody scans at a different pace. Um, but I tried it. And uh, yeah, it's painstaking. Um, 
painstaking in the amount of time it takes, painstaking in the errors that you get from it, um, phone overheats, got those kind of errors. So yeah, I just uh, I have a $80 paperweight and a tripod that you know I'll give my kid to play with. $80 paperweight. Uh, so you, you didn't buy it with the tripod? No, that's the one I'm going to give to my three-year-old. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, anything good to say about it? No. Um, I, I hate the color from the tour. Uh, it doesn't look similar at all to real life of what the house looks like, or even comparing to the pro two or pro three mm -hmm. looks way off. And you can see that in the, if you guys pull up a side-by-side -side comparison later on of all the tours that I did, you can, you can see that. Um, it took an hour and a half to shoot this space, um, which included a lot of failures to align. So that probably could have been cut down. But I, I noticed on your uh, on your tour shot with the Matterport Pro 3, that was an hour and 15 minutes. But that included out the whole property outside, too. Yes. Axis, I didn't do outside. And I okay. didn't do closets with the axis. Okay. So it really wasn't apples to apples because you 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 shot a lot less, but still took longer to to shoot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me ask the question this way, because uh, Tom, you're a professional real estate photographer, aerial drone, Matterport, DSLR, uh, et cetera. Uh, we kind of get it that Matterport axis smartphone rotator is not for you. Um, but if if somebody owned a, a bed and breakfast one location. I would hire a professional to come scan those six or seven rooms in the bed and breakfast. Um, this is, I think, a good uh, use for an agent who doesn't want to spend extra on marketing for a property, has a smartphone, is fairly, you know, tech savvy, and wants to do, you know, maybe two or three listings a month, or even a listing or two a month. Uh, they can do their own tour and call it a day. It wouldn't be too too painful. I I I guess I I I think like oh my gosh I'm gonna like tie up my smartphone. I'm going to, uh, I mean just just my impression because I I I wouldn't put my smartphone on it. This is a ten dollar tripod for Matterport. It comes in a beautiful box. Uh, instead of paying eighty dollars, you can pay ninety dollars, and you can get the ten dollar tripod. And I was just afraid, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my thousand uh, dollar iPhone Pro 14 Max. I have the same phone, and I I trusted it on there only because I have insurance through Verizon. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, if you're yeah, if you're just starting out, maybe, and you don't have much of a budget, you know, we've all anybody who's in business period has started at a place where, you know, they have to, even contractors, you have to start with a regular screwdriver before you can get a power screwdriver. Okay. Uh, um, and so, so, so it would be sufficient to say uh, training wheels for Matterport. If you're thinking about putting your toe in the water as a service provider, your professional photographer, sure. Get a Matterport access, smartphone rotator, shoot a house, go through the whole process of, uh, uploading to the Matterport cloud, processing it, doing some post-production on it and, and experience it. But if you're planning to make a living, this is not the tool for making a living with that tool. Yeah, for $80, it's a small investment. And if you haven't offered a 3D virtual tour to your clients, uh, you know, this is a good starting point. You can do one as a sample and then market that to everybody. And as soon as you get two or three jobs, just invest in something more. And something more, which yeah. kind of leads us to... Uh, two other cameras that you used on site, two 360 cameras. The first one was the Ricoh Theta Z1. Uh, uh, when and why would you use a Ricoh Theta Z1 camera for Matterport? Well, uh, if I didn't have the Pro 2 and I didn't have the Pro 3, uh, I would go with the Z1. Um, I happen to have one because I benefited from the purchase of um a competitor's camera system that included that. And so I cannibalized it to to do, you know, to use this shoot or to use it for the shoot. Um and it, you know, it's it's nice, it's quick, it's it's uh pretty efficient. I'm I'm just reviewing my notes here. And the Z1, um, I did uh peaking 
I call them peaks in the front and backyard where I don't do the whole yard. I just do a couple scans. Uh, that was 81 scans. It took me 35 minutes. So it's incredible. That was versus the Pro 3 of 113 scans, including all the outdoors, and an hour and 15 minutes in the Pro 2 at 52 scans. Uh, um, and that was, uh, I want to say... 45 minutes? 45 minutes, yeah. And that included a peak in the front backyard as well. So yeah. 52 scans on the Pro 2, 81 on the on the Theta Z1. Um and so far, I think what I heard was the Z1 was way faster than using a Matterport Pro 2 or Pro, Pro 3 camera. And you could have used it on all your outdoor shots, even though you just chose to do a little peek outside the outside. Yeah. And I'll say just to kind of compare apples to apples, I did break it down for the Pro 3. It took me about 50 minutes to do the entire uh, front of the house. Um. I'm sorry, it took me 50 minutes to do the entire inside of the house with the Pro 3. It took me an hour and 15 to do the outside spaces and the inside spaces. Mm -hmm. so, so another 25 minutes to add the outside. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it's quicker than um, using the Pro 2 and the Pro 3 for sure. For clarification, the Ricoh Theta Z1 is quicker than a Matterport Pro 2 camera or a Matterport Pro 3 camera. Yeah. Okay, now, so if you were just starting out as a real estate photographer, would you go with a, a so it, and we should say what it is, the Rico Theta Z1 uh, is a $1,050 camera. And just as a little parenthetical, the Rico Theta Z1 is actually morphed into the next generation of it is the Rico Theta z 151 gb so if you're going to amazon and you're googling uh, let's say rico theta z1 and you keep stumbling on the the z 151 gb the 51 gb is the latest version of it and the z1 uh is a legacy camera so uh it's got the same name it's a little bit confusing but you really if you're going to buy it you really want the rico theta z151 gb which we all still end up calling the rico theta z1 okay so i'm going to see if i can ask you that question again if you were just starting out today as a real estate photographer adding uh matterport to your service offering would you go with a rico theta z1 a matterport pro 2 camera or a matterport pro 3 camera uh, I'd go with the Z1. It has the most versatility. You can use it for Matterport. You can use it for other platforms. You can do regular 360s. You can do 360 videos, which I've been getting into more and more. Um, there is a slight issue with the coloring that I haven't quite put my finger on. Um, I have a little color deficiency in my eyes. So I don't know how to describe this, but it's not quite the same as the Pro 2 and the Pro 3. Um, but it it's an overall good uh, product. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. It, so this is a little bit counterintuitive. Let me just, for clarification, is sometimes people think, oh, well, a a a thirty four hundred dollar camera must be better than a thousand fifty dollar camera. A six thousand dollar camera must be better than a thousand fifty dollar camera. But the qualification I put on it, if you're just shooting residential real estate which camera, and you still went for the, the lower price camera. Yeah, because I'm thinking about, you know, really somebody just starting into offering this uh, service. And uh, when I first started, I didn't certainly want to spend 3000 or $6,000 on a camera that I didn't know that I was going to make money off of. Uh, and so this is a good entry point. And uh, if you find that you're getting swamped, you can always buy something more and then give this one to somebody else to add on to your team. Mm -hmm. um, there's some differences too, I noticed as far as like being able to zoom in and zoom out and the quality, um, you can't zoom in quite as far with the, with the Z1 as you can with the Pro 2 or the Pro 3. Zoom in not on the camera, but zoom in within the Matterport uh, virtual tour. Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good camera. Uh, and... Uh, if we didn't have a qualification, if I came back and said, well, yeah, I want to do residential, but I'm I'm also interested in, in things like uh, 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 as-built, AEC, BIM, 
uh, I, I need uh, E57 files, matter pack. Uh, I, I just threw a logo soup at you. Uh, uh, this, would that change your opinion? Yeah, if we're strictly talking about uh, these levels of cameras for E57 files, BIM and that such, AEC, um, I actually reached out to Matterport and asked them to clarify their level of detail, LOD, because on their website now to order E57, it says their LOD is 200, and I'm assuming that's from the Pro 2 era, but because you can now order E57s uh, from the Pro 3, and you're also, you've been able to get them from the BLK, I wondered if there was a higher level of detail, and I'm going to put out a video with their answer to that. I don't know if I should give it away today. No, don't don't give it away. Let's I'll, save it. That, that's a whole yeah. other show. And I'll put I, a, I'll put a, a video out there about that. But um, uh, I you know I would pick the Pro Two because of price, and then the Pro Three, and then at the lower end of that, I'd pick the BLK. Um, Lower end, as, meaning lower end choice. Lower end choice, just because of how expensive it is. Yeah. Uh, All right. We'll, we'll get to the BLK in yeah, a second. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me see if I can just put maybe a little big picture on it for somebody who's just starting out. You know, if if any of these things that I say don't mean anything to you, BIM, AEC, as built, E57, e matter pack, then don't worry about getting a Pro 2 or a Pro 3 or a BLK 360. The in, the uh, Rico Theta Z1 will be just fine. And uh, if and when you get to that level, then it'll be time to buy an, an, another camera. And just for clarification, if you did want to order things like uh, an E57 file or, or a matter port matter pack, you can't order that with a, with a Rico Theta with any 360 camera, you really need to have shot it with the Matterport Pro 2, Matterport Pro 3, BLK 360 first generation. So uh, uh, I intentionally wanted half my audience to, to go away just on those words because it re really it, it's it's like it can it can frighten anyone when you hear those terms. But yeah. if they don't mean anything to you, that's okay. That helps qualify in order to say a 360 camera may very well be the right first choice camera for you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, the other 360 camera that you uh, um, shot that same house with was an Insta 360 One RS one inch. And uh, when and why would you use to use that camera? And, and maybe you might even compare it to Rico Theta Z1 as a reference. Sure. And I think just for today's purposes and every video going forward, I'm just going to call it the one inch because the that one makes... inch that 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 works. We just yeah. rebranded the, the Insta 360 <laughs> one inch. The name is about as long as the title of this video today. Um, <laughs> so I was disappointed in this. I had high hopes for it. Um, it looks really cool. It comes apart in a million pieces and, um, you know, it, it looks great. Uh, the video from the video quality of it is great, you know, but that's not related to Matterport. Just speaking of Matterport, um, the coloring is similar to the Pro 2 and the Pro 3. So it kind of beats the Z1 in that regard and it blows out the axis in that regard. Um, but the window pulls aren't, aren't there as compared to the Z1. So I'm seeing a lot of blown out windows, which I wasn't expecting from this. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's the one inch sensor, but. Well, today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. And according to the Matterport website, support website, this camera, the, in, the, the one inch as you refer to it, is still in beta with Matterport. So it still may be that Matterport is tweaking it. Incidentally, other cameras that are in beta are the Ricoh Theta X, the Insta360 X3, and as we're discussing, the Insta360 One RS One Inch. So uh, I, th I think the jury still may be out on that as, because Matterport hasn't officially said we support the camera. It's just available in beta. And uh, you're probably the first one who's actually been talking about this, uh, the one inch in the We Get Around Network forum. 
uh, as it relates to Matterport. So uh, aside from the the color, was there any other consideration? Because the Insta3, the, the one inch is $800 compared to the Rico Theta Z for $1,050. So you could save $250. Um, your thoughts? Uh, well, I did... Um very similar scan uh instead of 81 scans with the z1 i did 65 with the one inch which included that front and backyard peak and no closets i'll rewind and say with the z1 i did do the closets um so that with all that with the z1 it was 35 minutes and with the one inch it was also about 35 minutes so timing is very similar um, so super fast it would save you two hundred and fifty dollars, but you're you're still concerned about the the quality. You were very happy with the Rico Theta Z one. Yeah, yeah. Now, if they can dial in those window pulls, um, it doesn't matter maybe to some people, but to me, it's just coming from a photography world and offering real estate photos. It's kind of a big deal to have clear windows and be able to see out and not see just a white mess. Okay, and I, I'll just point out we're not really going to discuss the other options here, but there is the Rico Theta X at $800, which is in beta with Bannerport. There is the Insta360 X3, $450. Uh, that's in beta as, as well. Uh, there is the Rico Theta SC2, which is $330. Um, and so there are some other cameras to consider. There are other cameras that work with Matterport, but they're no longer sold. So Matterport supports them, but they're no longer uh, available in the to buy them new. So we won't even talk about them because if you're just getting started, um, uh, let let me let me we we went through the five cameras. We haven't you didn't shoot the space with a Leica BLK 360 first generation. Um, when and why do you use a Leica BLK 360 first generation camera? Well, prior to the Pro 3 coming out, I would use it anytime I needed to do an outside space. Uh, and what I would do is combine um, Pro 2 and the BLK on a tour. Um, I've also used it to scan uh, at a higher, I guess, higher level of detail, get more accurate E57 files when I'm doing industrial spaces or commercial spaces. But for residential, it was strictly, do I need to scan something outside? And so that was the determining factor. Um, for me, the downside to it is it's just incredibly slow. Um, I didn't have any other complaints as far as the speed of it. Quality of the images of the BLK360 first generation versus a Matterport Pro 3 camera? Uh, I, not having a, a current frame of reference, I, I don't remember anything drastically different, but I did do a, um, a school one time and it was outside and inside spaces of a school and the quality was, you know, in on par with the Pro 2 because I did the Pro 2 and the BLK at the same space. Interesting, because I, I would have said the BLK 360 image quality is just not as good as a Matterport Pro 2 camera or Matterport Pro 3 camera. Uh, you know, I think probably for today's discussion, the price just blows everyone away anyway. So uh, you were talking about twenty, twenty-two thousand dollars for BLK three hundred and sixty. So it solved the problem for you for doing outdoors. It solved the problem for E fifty seven Matterport Matterpack when when you needed data files for for clients. But if you're just starting out, that's probably not an, an option. It may only be an option for somebody who has a Pro, Matterport Pro 2, Matterport Pro 3 camera and uh, is making significant strides in the AEC space as builds yeah. outdoor elevations uh, and is probably looking at that as uh, uh, because they have a specific job and the Pro 3 doesn't uh, uh, won't handle it. Yeah, and it's it, yeah, accuracy for those E57 files is huge. I've been working on a document uh to compare all the cameras and the accuracy and the the BLK is a lot more accurate than the Pro 3 and the uh the Pro 2. Ah, so so that's an interesting thing. So if you're doing residential real estate, the accuracy probably of all these cameras is just fine. Yeah. Um but if you start to move into commercial 
uh, then you uh, you probably need a Pro 2 or a Pro 3 or a BLK 360, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Quick, uh, quick stats just to tease a possible future show. Uh, yeah. BLK 360 is accurate, according to them, six millimeters at 10 meters. Yes. Pro 3 is 20 millimeters at 10 meters. Yes. And the Pro 2 is 44 to 58 millimeters at four and a half meters. Yes. And I, and, I, and I would say if you're concerned about that level of detail, that level of accuracy, then a 360 camera is not going to cut it. And uh, so if you're if you have clients that are you know interested in floor plans that are you know way more accurate because the, the 360 cameras are not going to be. Uh, I mean, the good news is you can today order floor plans either from Matterport or any third party company. Sure. Uh, to generate uh, floor plans from 360 cameras or any of the Matterport cameras. Um, but if you really do want to have an, an E57 file, a Matterport Matter Pack, whatever those are, you can't shoot those with a 360 camera. Mat Matterport won't provide that to you. Uh, Tom, let me go ahead and, and ask you through some filters, some lenses that a perspective Matterport uh, I'm thinking about getting getting started with Matterport. I'm trying to decide what camera. My lens might be something like, uh, well, how about in terms of quality? You know, you, you told me about these five cameras. Could you really tell a difference between them, six cameras? Tour quality? Yeah. Yeah. Pro, well, Pro 2 and Pro 3 are very similar, like I said. Um, the Z1 is, is slightly off. Um no, I'm sorry. The Z1 is is close to the Pro 2 and Pro 3. Uh, the the one inch was the blown out windows, and the coloring was slightly off. That might be attributed to it being in beta mode. Um, and the axis is just kind of no bueno. No bueno. Okay. No bueno. No bueno. So what what I would suggest to our our viewers, our listeners, is go to wgan.info forward slash Sparks Media Group. Go look at all five tours that Tom looked at. Uh, I looked at all five of them, Tom. And truly, if you had done a blind taste test with me and said, tell me which was shot with which camera, I don't know that I could have done that. I could have told you that some looked a little better than others. I could certainly tell, oh, this one had 360 views outside versus 360 scans. Yeah. Um, but generally inside the house, walking around, I, I thought, wow, they're all pretty similar. So, and that probably goes back to your point about, well, if you're just starting out, you know, a thousand fifty dollar Ricoh Theta Z1 camera may, you know, cut it and let you shoot the space in thirty five minutes versus maybe taking two or three times that. Yeah, it's super easy to you know nitpick things when when you have that luxury. Uh, but when you're you know, there's a lot of factors. There's budget. There's time on site. Well, 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 let's talk about it. We talked yeah. about quality. We we've we've really touched on 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 speed. You can do the you mentioned the two three sixty cameras that you shot in uh, a third or half the time of a Pro Two or a Pro Three. Um, if you're uh, um, if you need outdoors, it sounded like uh, if you needed outdoor scan data. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can use the Theta Z1 and the, the one inch outside too. I just chose not to do the whole yard. Um, okay, but it's it's not the right tool to design, the, yeah. to capture scan data. That's a whole nother discussion. But yeah. truly, if you're shooting outdoors or you have high elevations or great distance or accuracy matters or you, you, uh, this E57 file or Matterport Matter Pack, you really have just really probably two options, right? Matterport Pro 3 camera and like a BLK360 first generation. It, it's a, and I'm um, buying, it, oh, sorry. No, let me just say parenthetically, just yesterday, uh, uh, Wednesday, February 1, 2023, Matterport announced that they will support the Leica BLK 360 second generation, but wow. they haven't announced when. So if when matters, uh, go with the first generation. If if you're if you need the BLK 360 second generation and can wait, uh, it's coming. Support Matterport support says they're they're going to support that camera. Tom, I'm so sorry. I, you were about to say something and I cut you off. 
No, no, it's okay. I just uh, I lost my train of thought on what I was about to say, but that's that's. I, quite I was talking bit. about outdoors, height, distance, accuracy. If E oh. fifty seven matter pack. Yeah, I was going to say I'm I'm buying three Pro threes for the price of the the first generation BLK. If if it came down to it, um, I like the Pro three. Um, but it's interesting about the the second generation version that they're going to support that because there was some talk that because they have the Pro three, they may just say forget you like a <laughs> we don't need you anymore yeah uh, I, I i think what they've they've probably have overcome is to say well the pro 3 quality of the imagery is is much better than the blk 360 but if somebody needs the level of accuracy that a blk 360 can provide then let's let will matterport will support it because the level of the level of accuracy of a BLK 360 first second generation way exceeds a Matterport Pro 3 camera. So it they're they're competing with each other, but they're not. I mean, they're competing in the sense that that if if you needed to go out and buy uh, another camera and you had twenty two thousand dollars, you would go buy uh, three three and a half uh, Matterport Pro 3 cameras for for eight thousand for eighteen thousand. Six is eighteen thousand yeah. dollars versus going by one matter one like a BLK three sixty scanner first generation for about twenty or twenty two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, a lot of our discussion has been ser around service provider that kind of eliminated you know like trying to build a business on that Matterport axis. It was kind of training wheels to get started. Put your foot in the water. Sure, spend the eighty dollars. Um, but, you know, if you're a B a B and B with one location, um, you know, is there a thought there of which camera to go get? Or I, I, I certainly I heard your bias was no, uh, hire a professional Matterport service provider to sh shoot your space. Don't take any time to try and figure out all this technology. Yeah, no. Um, if if Matterport can resolve that window pull slash coloring issue of the one inch i'd go with that for you know eight hundred dollars 7.99 um uh but if it was a right now thing i'd say get the z1 um because it, it's very similar to the pro 2 and pro 3 as far as um quality and you know with that that b and b can take 360 photos if they want they can update their tour year round to show the different seasons that kind of thing. Okay. And and know that there's some other cameras out there that we haven't talked about. Uh yeah. still in beta with Matterport, the uh the Rico Theta X at eight hundred dollars, the Insta 360 X3 at four hundred and fifty dollars, the Insta uh uh and the uh Rico Theta SC2, which is out and is supported by Matterport for $330. So it is possible to get a 360 camera versus rotating your smartphone and uh, perhaps get done with it a little bit faster and not feel like you're putting your smartphone at risk uh, rotating around unless you're buying a, yeah. I had an, uh, had another option we didn't discuss. The, the Matterport Use Your Arm version 1.0 where we can take our phone and just do this. Yeah. So I, I'm just going to say it's not an option. It just I would be so depressed if if anyone watching WGA and TV Live at Five said, "No, I'm just going to use the Matterport Capture app on my iPhone or my Android device and rotate it around." You know, I think that's a party trick for doing, uh, you know, one three sixty. But as soon as you have, uh, you know, a space of any size and you're trying to connect the dots, uh, the Matterport axis yeah. rotator would be worth the 80 bucks yeah um, and I actually did that in an office space one time while I was waiting for somebody I took my phone and tried capture and did that and it is painstaking uh to do it with with your hand yeah party trick uh if you're a business and you got 10,000 square feet five or 10,000 square feet you just have your one space uh you you, you heard the you heard us that say hey hire a professional matterport service provider and you say well I'm kind of geeky I'm a photographer I'd still like to you know you know it's like a hobby thing I'll I'll get it I'll try it uh which camera am I buying am I buying a 360 camera am I buying a matterport camera uh, there's an argument to use the Pro 2. Um, 
you can do rough oh i can do roughly 3000 square feet in an hour or so and that's kind of a general average of open spaces or cluttered spaces yeah um so you got what 34 3500 $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $
again, it just as Tom has pointed out, is if you need uh, matter packs or E50, uh, E57 files, you can't do that on a starter account, can't order uh, the BIM models. You can order floor plans. This is a little bit different from a year ago. You couldn't order floor plans from, that were shot with 360 cameras. Now you can. So all the ways that you can capture Matterport Tour, you can get floor plans from Matterport, though uh, there are service providers, third-party service providers that have great alternatives for floor plans for Matterport. Uh, Tom, we've covered a lot of ground talking about Pro 3, Pro 2, Axis Z1, uh, uh, one inch BLK 360. Um, did you have other thoughts about uh, if you if you were just starting out, you know, words of wisdom uh, or maybe things you would have done differently? So when I started out, I got the Pro 2. Um... And I did that because that's what I saw Matterport was selling. Um, and I definitely wasn't going to buy the BLK360, even though they supported it. And I don't know that when I started, they were supporting other cameras. Um, so I got the Pro 2. And uh, my mentality is, you know, offer what the the bar is. You know, you could offer something less, but if you have the ability to offer a top tier product, do that. And so I've never offered to my clients anything less than the Pro 2. Um, now that I've had a chance to test everything, I might consider grabbing up a few Theta Z1s and giving them to my photographers and saying, okay, now we can cover more area or maybe offer this service for a little lesser price um, because of the fact that you can scan incredibly quick with those two 360 cameras. Um, and because they're relatively inexpensive, you know, I can get almost four one inches for the price of one Pro 2, um, or I can get three Z1s. So, yeah. It, it, it almost seems counterintuitive that a uh, Rico Theta Z1 at $1,050 uh, would be the right choice for a real estate photographer starting out because you would think, oh, the Matterport Pro 2 camera, the Matterport Pro 3 camera must be the right solution. They're more expensive cameras. Um, but it turns out, uh, you know, I, I challenge you, go look at the tours that Tom has shot uh, and compare side by side by side each of the cameras. And uh, I would really challenge you to, you know, to say, you know, which tour was shot by a Rico Theta Z1 versus a Matterport Pro 2 camera versus a Matterport Pro 3 camera? We'll know. I mean, there's a difference, but you know, there's, there's a whole other conversation about good enough. If you can shoot a tour in half the time or a third of the time that it takes, and and oh, by the way, as you scale your business as a service provider and you need a lot more cameras. We're not talking about $1,050, talking $1,050 times X versus $3,400 yeah. or 6,000 times X. Um, you have some additional thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. And to your point, when you said you were looking at all of them and you couldn't really tell a difference, um, you know, it's kind of a, I guess, a game for me when I'm looking at 3D tours online, particularly on Zillow. Um, I look at and I see who doesn't trim uh, the properties correctly and you know there's splatter outside the house and I'm like huh they're a rookie that kind of thing um, but then I also go to the bathrooms and see if I can see what kind of camera they use uh, by looking in mirror mirror reflections yeah. and um, you know getting to the bathroom I'm like I, I have no idea you know to, to your point you said you know they all look very similar I think um, but when I get in the mirror and I see um, you know like a pro 2 light I'm like huh he doesn't have the regular Pro 2. Or if I see a 360 camera, I'm like, ah. Oh. But, you know, having lived and breathed this now, uh, you know, with this particular house, getting through that 2,000 square foot house in 35 minutes was huge. Um, and so I would, okay, if, I, if I'm just getting started with this, I'm going to go grab a Z1 and go to town with it because I can knock out more houses per day if I have that business than I can with the Pro 2 where I might be somewhere on site for you know hours that that house at the Pro 2 was almost 40 45 minutes but 
I know a lot of photographers, even some of my own photographers would have taken, you know, hour and a half, two hours, probably doing the same, the same house with the, the pro two. So. I, I, you know, I, I'm glad you mentioned the Zillow. I know you shoot the Zillow 3d home uh, virtual tours. And I, I think it's a good point because my impression is you can only shoot uh, from a practical standpoint, Zillow 3d home with a, uh, a Ricoh Theta camera. And uh, so that may be a factor when you decide, well, you know, do I get the Ricoh Theta Z or the Insta 361 RS one inch, or, you know, these other cameras that, that may be less, uh, uh, just personally, I would say, well, I want to keep my options open because maybe I'm shooting, I'm going to shoot, maybe I'm planning to shoot Zillow 3D home. Okay. I really need to buy yeah. a, a Ricoh Theta camera, or I don't know whether I'm going to do that, but I just want to keep my options open. And the Ricoh Theta line of cameras is probably the most supported camera of platforms that that do integration so uh yeah we should uh get rico to sponsor us um because we're giving them a lot of kudos uh yeah the, the z1 um checks that tick mark for being compatible with zillow uh at least for the floor plans and virtual tour you can do a virtual tour with your iphone i believe but when you want to get a floor plan uh with zillow you have to use you know the the sc2 the v the Z1 and the X. So I would get the Z1. And then also, if you're going to dive into uh, Planetar and get an iGuide, um, you can buy the iGuide core, which is just the base unit, and attach a Z1 right on top of it. Yeah. So that would be another example where the I, iGuide Planix camera kit is built around a, a Rico Theta camera. So it, again, if you decide you're going to get Matterport and then for whatever reason you move away from Matterport and you're looking at other platforms, you go, oh, well, I could use my Ricoh Theta Z1 with iGuide. I only already own half of what it takes to, to, yeah. to, to have that kit. Okay. Yep. So, um, uh, and, and oh, by the way, if you're interested in iGuide Planix camera kit and iGuide, I, tell us about the video you shot uh, on, on that one. I don't know that I was there so much. I think I did a video. I can't find it. I'm, I'm... Yeah, you 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 shot a, a how to shoot with iGuide Planix uh, camera at that house. Uh, I don't know if it was at that house, but I think you've done that video. Yeah, I've done the video on how to use them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've done so many so many how to videos. I, yeah, they're. Uh, but if you go, if if you and I go to wgan.info forward slash Sparks Media Group, or we go to your YouTube channel at Sparks Media Group, we will likely find uh, an, an iGuide Planix how to shoot video. Uh, yeah, oh, you so know, maybe, maybe what I'm thinking, Tom, is that you did a video how to how to take how to put the camera in and apart. out of yeah. The, no, so I did. I did, and I got on the same house. Um, and I've done how-to videos, a walkthrough uh, with the iGuide, and I assumed that I did a walkthrough video with the iGuide at the same house. I can't find the files because I've been at this house every day for like, and I a ton of files. So um, if I don't I have those files, I'm going to go back though and redo it. Awesome. Uh, okay. Just, just to get the video. I, you know, I, I really do on behalf of the We Get Around Network forum community is to thank you for doing these side by side Matterport tours shot with five different cameras and recording in real time the shooting experience. Those videos are invaluable for anyone that is thinking about using any of the, the five uh, cameras that we've just discussed to say, what is it like to shoot a house, a, a 2,053 square foot house, four bedroom, three bath, using any one of these five cameras and see in real time from your point of view, what that experience was like. So, I mean, I, I think you you really, uh, it, it's 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 super geeky, but it's really a super <laughs> gift uh, 
for anyone that is actually trying to make a decision about buying uh, a camera to get started with Matterport. And when you watch his videos, you know, he and and if you go to his YouTube channel, he, he lists all his affiliate links to buy all the cameras and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, support him for, you know, doing what he's doing, because it it's like this gift that he's given to us to help you decide which camera's right for you. And then you have some affiliate links. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've I've done videos on walkthroughs of other houses, but it, it was really um, intriguing to me to be able to have that apples to apples of here's everything on the same house you decide now that you have all the data what you want to use and you know because when you're looking for a new product if you're like me i get on zilla or i mean on youtube and i'm looking up you know uh drone and then i get 70 different videos on drone reviews and by the time i'm done watching them all i'm like i just don't know what to get Right. Or you can just watch an hour of WGA and TV live at five with (laughs) Tom Sparks and and, and find out which camera is right for you. Tom, thanks for being a guest on the show today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. As always. Uh, We've been visiting with Tom Sparks, founder of Scan Your Space, a division of Sparks Media Group. You can find Scan Your Space at scanyourspace.com. You can find Sparks Media Group at sparksmediagroup.com. Uh, If you want to email Tom, info at scanyourspace.com. You'll find him in the We Get Around Network forum at Scan Your Space. We did mention that his YouTube channel at Sparks Media Group and that you can see all his tours and all his videos and all his how-to videos that he's been posting to the We Get Around Network forum. All find him under the short link wgan.info forward slash Sparks Media Group for Tom Sparks in Sioux Soon, California. I'm Dan Smigrad, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN T.